Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. Sound like old Leif Crick from back home. It does, for a fact. What do you suppose that no account wants around here? We'll soon find out. Jed, doggone it, you come out here and let me in. Yeah. <laughs> Leif. Jed. Well, this is a surprise. <laughs> Granny, you little old boss of you. <laughs> she ain't changed a bit, has you, Jed, huh? No bigger in a minute and scrappy as a bang in. <laughs> hey, look who's here. How there, Mr. Crick. Sure, he's good to see you. Yeah, it may clap. You're as pretty as a fistful of pink hollyhocks. Yes, sir, Jed, everybody always did say we had the two prettiest girls in the hill. Hey, is Bill S. Bell with you? You bet she is. Hey, where's Jethro? He ain't home from school yet. How about Morty? Bring her along? Oh, I had to leave my woman home to do the chores, Granny. Roof needed patching, well caved in, had to be dug out, mule needed chewing, lots of little things like that. You know, we just poor gully jumpers. We don't roost high on a hill like you folks. That's Bill ain't out in the corner, Mrs. Crick, neither. I had to leave my woman to home, Ellie Mae. And Nancy Bell, she's over at the motel unpacking and purtying herself up. Motel? Why, Leif, we got plenty of room to take care of you and Nancy Bell right here. Well, now, Jed, you know I ain't one to trade on a friendship. Of course, after Jethro and Essie Bell's proper hitched, then we're gonna be wanting to live near our kinfolk. Hitched? <laughs> Jethro and Essie Bell? You mean you don't know what that boy's been up to? Uh, no, I can't say as I do, Leif. Then we's got some talking to do, man to man. Come on, Ellie, we'll make a pot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's, sir, uh, you got a couple of fine women folk there. I reckon you're as proud of them as I am of mine. I reckon? I reckon you'd want to see right done by Ellie Mae just the same as I'd want to see right done by Essie Bell. I reckon? I reckon you wouldn't want no young man playing fast and loose with her feelings. I reckon? I reckon the man's daughter's All just right, about Leif, as... All supposing you stop blowing on the fur and get to the hide, what are you trying to say? Well, don't come easy saying what I got. Well, let's go in and sit down and give it a try. Got yourself a regular palace here. You got. Oh, oh, oh I, I better take off my cloth now because I don't want to get you a fancy carpet, old dude. Just leave everything on, Leif, and sit down and speak your piece. <laughs> oh, my. Sure do be sitting on the stump now, don't it? <laughs> I guess you got this here chair stuck full of money, huh, Jed? Huh? 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 <laughs> yeah, Leif. Uh, now, uh, but Jethro and Essie Bell. Well, to speak plain out, your Jethro done grabbed the hook to my Essie Bell's heart. <laughs> I don't recall Jethro mentioning Essie Bell's name since uh, way last summer when she won that beauty contest. That's when it happened. What happened? This happened. Love letters wrote by your Jethro to my Essie Bell. Love letter? Steaming hot love letters. <laughs> Someday I gotta have a long talk with that boy. <laughs> Let me see the letters. Jeb, I hadn't better. You having a pretty, sweet, innocent young daughter of your own, 
You might just anger up to the point where you'd hurt that boy. Jethro got out of line, did he? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it getting out of line, providing his intentions is honorable. If these letters was wrote way last summer, how come you're just getting here? Well, now, I ain't a wallerin' in money like you, Jeff. I had to scrimp and save to get to where I could afford to make the trip. Why, I'm a poor man. Only treasure I got's my little Esabel. All right, Leif. Not knowing what Jethro wrote, it's hard for me to speak. But I know he'll want to do the right thing, and I'll see that he does. Spoke like a true hillman. Why, I said to Morty before I left, I says, dry your eyes, Morty. Jed Clampett's a man of honor. I says he'll see that Jethro does the right thing by our Isabel. And I will, too, Leif. You can count on her. Yes, sir, Jed, you sure got yourself a palace. I expect you've got more money than a pig has grunts. Well, he's eating regular. I expect a generous man like you is aiming to settle a heap of that money on Jethro when he gets married. Him being almost like a son to you and all. Uh, don't count your chickens for the hats, Leif Crick. I want to hear Jethro's side of this first. Oh, you're a good man, Jed. Fair. Like I says to Essie Bell, I said, dry your eyes, honey. Jed Clampett's a fair man. He's gonna do the fair thing. He's gonna see you married fair and proper to Jethro. And like I said to you, Leif, I... Whoever's driving that truck's mighty shy on brain. That's Jethro. Fine boy. <laughs> Oh, Leif here says that last summer he wrote some love letters to his daughter, Essie Bell. Love letters? Why, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of, son. Most natural thing in the world for a handsome boy like you to write letters to a beautiful girl like Essie Bell. Them was fine letters, too. You should be proud on them. Oh, well, thank you. Well, how come she never answered them? Well, son, right after she won that beauty contest, she must have got hundreds of letters like yours, proposing marriage and things. Why, well, it took her a while now, to... hold on, Leif. Jethro, did you propose marriage in them letters? Oh, let me think. Well, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of, son. Most natural thing in the world for a handsome boy like you. I give him a chance to think, Leif. It ain't something that comes easy to him. Love ain't nothing you think about. Love comes from the heart. <laughs> he never said he was in love with Essie Bell. Well, he always was. You remember when you used to tote her books home from school? Old Mel Pratt, he took them away from you and beat you up? Yeah, but he was twice as big as me. Yeah, but if you was to marry Essie Bell now, that would sure leave old Mel Pratt drinking from an empty jug. <laughs> yeah? Yeah! <laughs> so it's something you have to decide about right now. Well, of course you don't. You just think on it for a while. Think about how Isabel's the prettiest girl in the hills. Yeah? Best dancer, too. Yeah? How much you'd like to marry her. Yeah! Take on the sun. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> think what you're doing. You sure you're ready to support a wife? Could be you'd have to quit school. Well, hot diggity dog, then I'm ready. <laughs> I'll bring Isabel over for supper. But first you go down to one of them fancy Beverly Hill jewelry stores and you pick out a great big diamond ring. All right, and while I'm there, I'll get something for Essie Bell, too. <laughs> I'll see you later, son. Bye-bye, <laughs> Miss... Bye-bye, Daddy Crick! <laughs> I'm going to get married! Someday, I should have had a long talk with that boy. Oh, come on, Jed. Cheer up. Maybe Essie Bell will make a good wife for Jethro. That boy ain't ready to get married, Granny. He just don't know what it's all about. He's a heap smarter than you give him credit for. Why, he's halfway through the sixth grade. And at his age, too. <laughs> Granny, he's smart at book learning, but when it comes to knowing about life... Hey, Granny! Are you going to dance at my wedding and show them their pretty ankles of yarn? <laughs> now, you listen to me, boy. Getting married is nothing to fun about. Now, are you sure you're ready to give Etsy Bell Crick your name? Yeah, if she wants it. But Jethro seems like a right poor name for a girl. <laughs> See what I mean, Granny? Different me's ready to help pick out your ring, Jethro. Now, really, me, I don't reckon a jewelry store is the best place for this little feller. He's right giving a picking up things and swallowing them. I see what you mean, Paul. Skipper, you stay here. Why, if you was to eat some of them diamond rings, they'd give you the stomach ache. <laughs>
Just a moment, please. I'm sure you must be in the wrong place. Is this a jewelry store? Well, yes, but we sell only the very finest and most expensive pieces. I suggest you try a notion store. <laughs> Jethro done got the notion. What he needs now is a ring. Hey, Uncle Jed, there's some rings over here. Yes, uh, but, but, but please, now, now I assure you... Uh, Them red diamonds is pretty. Those are rubies. Well, ask her if she wants to sell one. <laughs> Madam, the ruby I'm referring to is not a lady. How she got them rings is her own business. <laughs> Just ask her if she wants to sell one. Perhaps you will understand how out of place you are when I tell you that no ring in this case sells for less than $10,000. Now, wouldn't you like to look elsewhere? Yeah, sure, it's where you keep the good stuff. <laughs> Security guard, please. That's right, Paul. Mr. Drysdale said we should always ask for the best. Did I hear you mention the name Drysdale? Yes, sir. Milburn Drysdale? <laughs> yes, sir. He's our next door neighbor. He keeps Jed's 35 million in his bank. Now, Granny, I ain't sure it's 35 million no more. Might be close to 40 by now. You got the phone in your hand. Call up Mr. Drysdale and see who's closer, Jed or me. <laughs> Stand by till I make one call. <laughs> Things have been a little slow since Christmas. Quiet in place, huh, Isabel? I'll say. Gee, Pa, this is just about the biggest place I ever did see. Yes, sir, Isabel. You did a mighty wise thing when you decided to marry up with Jethro. I didn't decide, Pa. You did. I didn't even answer his letters. Well, it was a good thing I did discover those letters. You'd have been married to that no-account Mel Pratt. Mel Pratt ain't a no-account. He's a good, strong, hard-working boy. You gotta learn to keep your mouth shut, girl. You've got to learn to keep your mouth shut, especially when there's any food around. I still can't figure out where you found vittles enough to put on all that weight since last summer. Mel Pratt's been feeding me. He wanted me to get good and strong so I could help him clear that acre of land. That ain't land, girl. That's rocks. If you want to marry up with a boy that's got an acre of rocks, you should at least have him cut and piled up into a fine palace like this. <laughs> But Mel Pratt loves me, and I love him. I don't want to hear that name no more, Isabel. You're going to marry into the lap a luxury girl. You're going to wear fine clothes and jewels. You're going to have servants to wait on your hand and foot. You're going to have a butler running ahead of you, opening doors, all kinds of things like that. Oh, look at that! Right here now, Isabel. You don't want him to think we ain't never seen a butler before, do you? <laughs> I do hope you'll tell Mr. Drysdale how well we have treated you here. Oh, here we are. Now, uh, this is the engagement ring. Thank you. Uh, you might, uh, in a subtle way, of course, let the bride know that she is getting ten perfect carrots. Well, that's my nice you. Nice my foot. After the money you spent, he could at least send her a smoked ham. <laughs> and here are Madame's lovely necklace and earrings. How many carrots did I get? About 50. Uh, but of course, uh, they're not perfect. Well, in that case, I'll take turnips. <laughs> <laughs> and for Mademoiselle, this beautiful diamond bracelet. Do I get some carrots too? Oh, yes, indeed. About 30. You sure are generous with your vegetables. <laughs> so are you, sir. You're going to be sending me a lot of cabbage. I am? Yes. Uh, cabbage is money. Well, it's your store, but I'll be dogged if I see how you stay in business. <laughs> I think that that there butler's nothing but a monkey. <laughs> you ever see a monkey playing a pie am? No, sir. Now, you just hush up, girl, and let me do the talking. 
Mr. Butler. That's mighty fine music. <laughs> Nessie Bell is here. Yeah I want to see my sweetie. Now, Jethro, you get a hold of yourself. I don't want you running in there and picking up that little girl and scaring her half to death. <laughs> yes, sir. You put the truck away. I'll wait for you here. We'll all go in together like a proper family order at a time like this. Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Don't be too hard on him, Jed. Now that I think back, he must be desperate in love. What makes you think so? For the past week, he ain't at his supper. For Jethro, that's desperate. <laughs> that boy will eat anything that don't bite him first. Who's that a coming, Paul? Looks like that Beverly Caterers. Yeah, the young widow that cooks for folks. <laughs> Hi, is Jethro ready? Ready for what, ma'am? For a regular date. Howdy, Mary! Sure is good to see you. You're right on time. Let's go. Wait a minute, boy. Uh, you got a date with this girl? Yes, sir, Uncle Jed. Well, every day after work, she picks me up, and we drive up into the hills and park and watch the sun go down. <laughs> then you know what we do? Ellie May, go in the house. <laughs> what do you do, boy? Well, then we climb into the back of the truck and eat all the vittles that's left. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder he ain't been eating his supper. <laughs> I've got your favorite today, Jethro. Swedish meatballs. Jethro, uh, the girl you're gonna marry is waiting in the house. You can't go running off with her and leave Essie Bell. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey Marion, uh, you reckon there's enough meatballs in the truck for the three of us? <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> huh? Here's your blushing bride. Come give her a big hug. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm looking for my sweet little old Leslie Bell Crick from back home. I'm right here, Jethro. Jethro, son, this here's Essie Bell. <laughs> Your Essie Bell Crick? Yeah, Jethro. <laughs> Marion! Wait, wait, wait! Nessie Bell, I hope you ain't taking this too hard. <laughs> you know, it's hard for you to talk at a time like this. <laughs> I understand, so you just listen. Now, first off, I want you to know that we's getting Jethro back for you. Now, when Ellie's cut across the hill, and your paws took out her after him in his car with Granny riding shotgun. <laughs> Now, I don't excuse the boy for what he done, but you have cheated a mite since he seen you last. <laughs> Filled out, you might say. <laughs> Jethro, he's got kind of used to these puny city girls. <laughs> Essie Bell, I just can't stand to watch you suffer. <laughs> Ain't there anything I can do? Yeah. Would you get me another pie out of the icebox? <laughs> Thank you. Want some? No, not right now. Uh, you don't appear to be too unhappy. Oh, heck no. I like pumpkin pie as well as apple. <laughs> I mean, uh, about Jethro running off. Mm. Mr. Clampett, if I told you something, would you promise not to tell Pa that I told? Because he told me not to tell you. And if you tell him I told, well, there just ain't no telling what he might do. As near as I can sort out the tails and the toes, I think I can promise. It ain't Jethro I'm in love with. It's big old Mel Pratt back home. Well, now, uh, tell me more of what your pa told you not to tell. <laughs> Yeah. 
no more of this running after other girls. Ain't no boy can love two girls. Well, that leaves Essie Bell out. She's about two girls and a half. Never you mind your tongue, Israel. You take a girl for better or worse when you marry her. Yeah, but she got worse before I got married. <laughs> Picture me, Leif. I'll look after Essie Bell. Come on, boy. Let's start talking about this wedding. Mr. Crick, you call me daddy now you're marrying up with my daughter. <laughs> but Mr. Crick, I don't think I want to get married to nobody. I want to finish the sixth grade so as I can be a brain surgeon. <laughs> well, you should have started thinking about that before you wrote Essie Bell, them hot steaming letters full of love talk. I don't remember no love talk. You don't, huh? Now, just how'd you start them letters? Dear Essie Bell. Well, ain't that love talk, calling a woman dear? <laughs> it is. I'm in trouble with a lot of women. <laughs> Men, too. Well, hey, if I see you fetched him back, all right. Now, Jethro, you can get upstairs and get packed for your honeymoon. Oh, but Uncle Jed, I don't oh, want to. Get... get up there and do like I tell you. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> You're a good man, Jen. Fair. I try to be. What do you think of my giving Jethro and Essie Bell my house for a wedding present? Oh, that is fair. <laughs> that is really what you call fair. Of course, it's uh, just a little two-room place, but they'll make out. <laughs> well, well I, I ain't the best in counting, Jed, but I, I done towed up 12 rooms since I've been here. Oh, I ain't talking about this place. I'm giving them my little shack back in the hill. <laughs> Back to home? Yeah, there's a uh, half acre land goes with it. Of course, it's mostly rocks and stumps, but uh, a couple of strong young uns like Jethro and Essie Bell have that thing cleared in four or five years. <laughs> Is that all you're gonna give them? Oh, shucks, no. Essie Bell, fetch in that other wedding present I give you. Coming, Daddy Clampett. <laughs> That's better. I always said you was a generous man. Why, just before I left home, I, I, I said to Marty, I said, why, Jed Clappett's a, a generous man. Why, there's just no telling what he... Why, 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 what are you doing with him? Daddy Clappett gave him to Jethro and me to take home with him. You, you can't take him home with you. Why, folks is liable to think he's my grandson. <laughs> well, you could tell him he's a monkey. That ought to clear it up. Leastwise for some folks. <laughs> Jed, you mean you ain't gonna give the young'uns no money? Oh, you bet I am. Here you are, Essie Bell. Here's a brand new penny for you to nail up over your cabin door. Ain't nothing brings you luck like a new penny. Thank you, Daddy Clampett. Look, Pa, ain't it shiny? Get that thing out of here. Why, why you'd be better off marrying that male Pratt. He's got a whole acre and a nice cabin, and he's got a sow with a litter of pigs. Now, just a minute there, Leif. Essie Bell was promised to Jethro. While we're on that subject, let's have a look at her dowry. Uh, I ain't got no dowry, Daddy Clampett. Yeah. You don't want Jethro marrying no girl without a dowry. Now, Mel Pratt, he don't care. He'll take a dowry or no dowry. How soon's the wedding? I'm all ready to dance. There ain't gonna be no wedding, Granny. I'm taking my assy out of here. Come on, Isabel. Now, just a doggone minute. I got all dressed up to have a wedding dance. Now, let's have it. Well, she's gonna marry Mel Pratt. Don't bother me with details. Let's get on with the wedding dance. <laughs> For a fact, I do, daughter. <laughs> Always said you was a generous man, Jeff. Forget it, Leaf. All it's gonna cost me is some cabbage. <laughs> Say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation. <laughs>